podcast where I like to talk about all the things that I'm knitting and crocheting and potentially spinning and quilting and whatever other hobby I can add to my hobby list. Um, this morning, I said I was going to film a podcast, but I really want banana muffins, so I'm going to do that first. Bananas. <laughs> sitting down and I've got about 30 minutes to film a video because Mr. Sheep is on his way home. And I, I also don't know how long my camera is going to last, my phone, because it's dying. So all because I wanted a banana muffin this morning. Other things, you know. Hmm. I'm drinking green tea because I have been having a lot of anxiety and so I cannot handle coffee. And I'm out of decaf coffee. So my idea was to do a knit and chat. Um, I have my iPad here because I believe I made a list of things to talk about. Did I? Yeah. Did I? Yeah, I did. In case I run out of ideas. <laughs> um, today I'm going to probably get a couple of rows in on the Ariana cardigan. Um, neckline that I've been working on. Uh, so I, the last I talked about this was a video I dedicated all about it. And I got about to here and then stopped filming. Um, I'm doing a join as you go technique with the granny squares, which is working out pretty well, or it was working out pretty well um, until I got to the sleeves. It still worked out well, but it just, um, I was like, oh, this is easy. This is a breeze. And then I was humbled by <laughs> the sleeves, which I figured out, but it did take some, a couple of, of probably an evening of just reading the pattern and trying to figure that out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. So I am a little jumbled. <laughs> when it comes to my organization for this video. I had an idea for another video and I was like, I just can't, I can't get it together in time. Um, I got a lot of things going on that are causing stress in my life. Uh, the biggest one is that I am leaving the country in 17 days for two months. <laughs> um, so that's kind of big news. <laughs> So yeah, I probably won't be posting anything on YouTube for um, half of April, May, and half of June. So sorry to get your hopes up that that's going to happen. I'll definitely, um, when I come back, get back to it. But And I'll try to film some stuff while we are there. We're going to Italy for two months. Um, we, Mr. Sheik and I, did something called woofing in our early 20s in France for a couple months. And it was so much fun and we just always wanted to do it again. So here I am in my mid thirties doing something very financially irresponsible. <laughs> I'm walking away from everything and going to Italy for two months. So that is why I am very stressed out because I'm leaving in 17 days and I have a lot of things that need to get figured out before we go. So I, we are also rest, we, um, my partner in crime in the foster rescue world, she picked up a cat 
that she was going to TNR, which if you don't know what TNR is, it's where you trap strays, fix them, and then release them. And depending on where you live, there's programs, less than there used to be, unfortunately, but there's programs that will help you pay for it so that it's way less expensive. Well, you still have to pay for it, um, but it's way less expensive. And then you can help reduce the population of strays in your neighborhood. So there's a neighborhood that we go to and we, TNR, I say we, she does it, but um, the last cat that she picked up was pregnant and we couldn't get it fixed in time. Well, and also, you know, you know, um, they do do cat abortions, but we didn't take care of, it was too late. So she has kittens and they have, um, I can't remember the name of the virus, but it's like Parvo, like Pano, Panolupia. Uh, it's like Parvo for cats. And she had seven kittens and we've, we've lost three of them. So it's been a really stressful week trying to help yeah. her um, get the four kittens back being healthy and also coming home to our house and having to like sanitize and wash and make sure that we are not spreading anything to our cats who just got vaccinated and poor little P was sick and she was so dramatic about it here okay um so yeah how am I gonna knit and chat if you're on my lap like that I guess I'm just gonna knit and sit if we sit we knits I don't even know what am I gonna talk about <laughs> um I have like a list of things but I feel like I just talked about Italy and kittens in our lives. I, I've been reluctant to tell anybody that I was going to Italy for two months, especially strangers, just because I get a lot of questions and a lot of like curiosity of like, how are you doing this? You're 34. Like, how are you? Number one, like I said, it's not the most financially responsible thing I've ever done. Um, I guess my next question that I probably get is, do you work? And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> um, obviously, Yes, I guess not obviously. I guess not obviously, but do I have a job, a traditional job? No, um, I do not. I did. I have all my life except for about a year ago. Okay, she's gone. We can knit. We can knit. Um, I left my job. I worked in interior design and I still love interior design, but the job, the place I was working at was just not working with me. So I left. We had also just invested, Mr. Cheek and I, in our first um, endeavor with Airbnb. So we bought a cabin, fixed it up, started an Airbnb, and we did that for a year. And then I also, when I left my job, started managing and cleaning the Airbnb, and then also managing and cleaning my mom's Airbnb. So I still was working. I was still working and producing money, whatever. Um, after a year of... Airbnb being, we sat down. Hold on, let me find my ball yarn here. It rolled away when Peaches sat on me. So after a year, we sat down and looked at the um, profitability and like everything that went into it and ultimately decided that it was not worth the time because it takes, it's a lot of time and effort. If anyone ever tells you that Airbnbs are passive, they're lying. Um, unless you are making enough money that you can pay like a manager and a cleaner, which I just never got to that point. We were always just doing everything ourselves. So um, after a year, we sat down, we looked at the numbers and we decided that it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth it. We were gonna make the same amount of money if we just rented it full-time to a full-time resident. And it would be less wear and tear and it was just way less work. That's including me cleaning it. So we're making the same amount that we were that whole year just by renting it out. Um, there are some cons to it. We really enjoyed the cabin and that's the reason that we wanted to do it. That's the reason we bought it is so that we could go to the cabin and um, this is hard, knitting and chatting. <laughs> Oh man, 
it so we really enjoyed going there and working on it and taking care of it if it would have been more profitable and it made more sense we would have kept doing it um, i'm still managing and cleaning my mom's airbnb which is kind of like like part time um, I did find someone to cover for me while we're gone. And then my mom is just going to have to take over a lot of it too. Um, so Mr. Cheek is a termite inspector and we also are real estate investors. So I'm very reluctant to tell people that too, because I feel like landlords have like such a negative um, connotation to them when you talk about being a landlord, which we are which is so weird, um, but we love houses. We love real estate. I mean, he works in houses. I, I worked in houses, like um, I actually worked in staging, like in, t in, in t interior design. Um, we have not ever flipped a house technically, but we have renovated multiple houses um, and we started investing really young into real estate and so that is what we do. We are currently renovating a small one bedroom unit in the back of one of our other units. And so like I was saying, landlords get this bad rep. We're not, I don't want to be like, well, we're good landlords, you know, we're not bad landlords. Well, I've, we've actually never really rented to anybody but family until now with the cabin, but Everything that we do, we do very intentionally. We put our heart and soul into it. We like to buy old houses, like we bought a Craftsman style house and brought it back to glory and then rented it. And then we continue to work on it. Um, so yeah, it's that's kind of, that's what we do. We love houses. We love going into houses. We love looking at houses, even if we're not buying them. We're just, we like, we like houses, you know? Um, we would love to get into flipping. That's probably our goal next would be to do that. But it's just, you know, you have to have a lot of capital to do that. Um, which is hard to do. So where was I going with this? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what we do. And that's how we are able to walk away and go to Italy for two months. Um, which is still scary, but we're doing it. We're doing it. So we talked about kittens. We talked about what I do for a living, which is Airbnbs and real estate, basically. Um, I don't know in the future if I need to get another job when I get back, maybe, for the income, you know? Not gonna lie, we're not there 100% yet. Um, but we'll see. We have lots of ideas and plans for our lives that we're always going to be into real estate, no matter what. We just strive to be better landlords. I, I'm never going to call myself a landlord again after this. Um, so yeah, this YouTube, I guess I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I started this YouTube over a month ago with the intention of posting every week. Uh, that is harder than it sounds. Um, anyone who does that is amazing. I mean, it just takes a lot of work to, I don't know. So I didn't make a video last week. I had gotten up and I had a day that I was going to do it and honestly I woke up and I had a bad headache and I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel good. And I, if I had a normal job, I'm not saying that this is my job, but if you know, you don't do that when you have a job, but this is something I'm doing for me. And I was like, I'm not going to force myself to do it. If I don't feel good. I actually was at, like out three days last week because I had a really bad headache that lasted for three days. Um, I'm warm. I'm going to take the sweater off, but I also don't want to. So yeah, I started this YouTube a month ago. And I like it. It's fun. I like meeting people. I've met a couple friends. Um, we chat and it's, it's just been eye opening to what goes into it. It's been really fun learning like the editing part of it. I thought the editing would be really fun or really easy. Like when I started this, 
and that the filming it would be harder, like the video quality and the sound quality. And then I almost feel like it's the opposite, like the filming it with, I'm filming on my iPhone and the audio is fine and the video quality is fine. I mean, you might be watching this and be like, what are you talking about? This is horrible. But to me, I was totally fine with the audio and totally fine with the video because I do, I do actually have a, um, like a Canon 5D, but I don't, I don't know how to use it for this application. So I, I may get there one day, but as of right now, I'm like, this is fine. And this is serving this purpose and it's doing what it needs to do. Um, but editing it, editing it was a lot harder than I was expecting. The reason I thought that it wouldn't be was because I love to edit like little videos on my phone. Oh, and it just, it wasn't the same thing. <laughs> Um, I'm using iMovie because iMovie is free and I really don't want to like buy any um, software for, you know, this hobby of mine. The The only thing that I don't like about iMovie is the text. The text are not chef's kiss. They are just, they're bad. They're so dated. They all have like animations. So you don't, you can't just put like a little text that's just like, hey, it's, it'll be moving or doing something. And to me, it just like reminds me of like PowerPoint or something. So that's the only thing I don't like about iMovie. And for now I can deal with that. So that's what we're dealing with. That is what we're dealing with. What was I getting at? That uh, I'm making these videos, the editing, um, the audience, the reciprocation that I'm getting has all been positive. I don't have a huge audience, you know, I, I'm small, I'm getting started. Um, so I really don't feel like I need to make the annou announcement that I'm leaving for two months. But if you are into my channel and you were expecting, I'm sorry, I'm leaving for two months. I'm going to go to Italy. <laughs> um, you should still subscribe though, because I will be back. I am drinking my green tea out of my Bernie mug. This is as political as I will ever get on the channel. I promise you it was just little subliminal mugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. You can sit. So yeah, I guess, I guess my point, my little on my notes was YouTube intentions was what I, and I've talked about this, I think in my first video that my intentions for this YouTube channel, um, were really just to make friends and to be part of the knitting community. I don't have any monetary gains or like fame in mind with this. Like, obviously, um, I'm not sponsored by anybody or trying to be, if anything, I don't like the idea of influencing um just because i feel like it's really hard to be genuine in that space when there's monetary value in it i i think uh, people can do it i think you can be genuine but i i think there's a price for everyone like if pepsi came knocking on my door and was like we're going to give you a life-changing amount of money if you drink Pepsi on your channel and talk about how it changed your life, I, I am going to drink Pepsi and talk about how it changed my life. You know, there is a, there's just a price for everybody. And, um, so I just, I have a hard time with the idea of influencing, even though like if I inspire you to pick up the Ariana cardigan, um, and crochet it, that's to me, that doesn't really feel like influencing. Like I don't have like a coupon code or anything. Um, not saying that that's bad, but I don't know. I just don't know if it's for me because I, I am somebody who really values being genuine and not, um, I don't know, like, like I want to be able to say things like that. I don't like superwash, you know, I don't like superwash yarn. So, you know, if I ever come on here and I'm like, you know, the superwash yarn, you, it's just, it wouldn't be genuine. Um, that's a whole other topic, but not to say that I'll never knit with superwash again. I feel like there's a, a place and a time for it, for like gifting and stuff. I just feel like I've fallen out of love with it. But I still want to support like indie dyers, but I, I do feel like there's a shift happening in there where more indie dyers are um, dying with non superwash wools. The biggest one I can think of in my head would be Fiber for the People by Tara, Taylor Owens. She's got a really cool new line of yarn that's non superwash and like locally um, milled and everything. And I would love to get my hands on some of that and buy some of that. But so the conclusion to that 
is that, you know, I don't, I'm not here to, to be a YouTuber and sell you whatever. I'm struggling with my hair. <laughs> it's holding it up too. Um, and then, you know, like everyone can be bought at a cer certain price, but Pepsi, if you would like to make a deal here, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> I don't even drink. I mean, I like soda when I, um, when I have a bad headache or if I'm really car sick, I will, I will drink soda. But for the most part, I don't drink soda except for my homemade soda, which is a whole nother tangent. So let's do that. I'm like excited that I like found a, a pathway to talk about soda, which I think I missed something else in my brain that I had there for a second. But so last year I had a bladder infection for the first time in the last 10 years um, that I had not taken antibiotics. And I was devastated because I had to take antibiotics. I tried. I went like three or four days into it, trying not to take them. Everyone around me was freaking out because I was, I was bad. I had like lower back pain. I was not able to do anything. You know, you need to take those antibiotics. So I'm like, no, I don't want to. They're, they like ruin your gut microbiome. Sorry, I'm about to get real hippie in here, but you should know I'm a hippie. Um, says my dad. <laughs> so yeah, I took the antibiotics and I was devastated. I actually cried. I actually broke down and cried when I decided to take them because I'm a big baby and I got emotional and that's okay to be a big baby sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I sat down, took them and I made a vow that this year I was going to be the gut health queen. So, um, gut health cheek. Uh, so anyways, I am so committed and it is my number one priority to eat probiotic food every day. I did like a month of actual probiotics to restore my gut health afterwards, but then I have just been loading my days with every day I start with milk kefir. I make like a smoothie with milk kefir and orange juice. And then at least one meal a day, I have a glass of my homemade soda. And when I say homemade soda, it's water kefir. Um, which is like a probiotic drink. It's similar to kombucha. It's, it doesn't, it's not very similar, but if you've never heard of this type of thing, then yeah, it's kind of like kombucha where you like make this, um, well, kombucha uses tea, but kefir is just like a, a sugar water and you ferment that with the strain of, um, grains, kefir grains and for like five days or whatever. And then you do a second fermentation with juice and it carbonates and it's actually really good. I think it's better than kombucha because it doesn't have that vinegary aftertaste. Um, I don't know of any brands really that sell it at the stores. There's so much kombucha, but I rarely see water kefir. And even if I do, I've never really seen it like with the simple ingredients of just water, sugar, kefir grains, juice, you know? And it's like kombucha too, where you put a lot of, it seems like a lot of sugar when you're making it, but really the grains eat that sugar. It's the prebiotic. So um, I'm not saying it's not a sugary drink because you do put juice. It's kind of, it's like a soda, but um, I don't know how many calories or sugar is in it because I'm making it and I don't know how to calculate that. But like if you drink the water, the sugar water, you taste it and then you put the kefir grains after five days, it's not as sweet. It's more vinegary. So so yeah, that's my tangent on Pepsi and <laughs> my upcoming sponsorship. I'm also just checking about it again. Um, but how I make my water keeper and how I am loading my gut with good probiotics. Even my kitty cats take probiotics sometimes and my dog. Um, oh, my, I was talking about my hair too. Um, starting my own YouTube channel. And then having to watch these videos a second and third time while I'm editing them, I'm just like, whoa, I really need to learn how to do my hair. I don't know how. I don't, I just don't, I'm not a hair person. Um, I, I wear a lot of buns in my hair, you know, like tied up. And yeah, I got dressed for just this video, just so you know, because I was, I was wearing what I was wearing when I make my banana muffins, just like my little ragamuffin um, house outfit with sweats and a cardigan, a Target cardigan. And I went to my physical therapy appointment and I have been so sensitive to scents lately. I, I don't buy anything with fragrance because Mr. Cheek is also really sensitive to scents. But I've been so sensitive lately that even 
having someone touch me who is wearing cologne. I can't handle it. Like when I was around this guy, he wasn't, it wasn't like a punch you in the face cologne. Like when you get on a bus with some, you know, older ladies and you're like, wow, that's strong. It wasn't like that. It was just a mild cologne. It was pleasant. And then, you know, he was touching my shoulders or whatever, doing his physical therapy stuff. And then I got home and I kept smelling just like a small little residue of it. And I was like, I can't do it. I can't. It's making me sick. So every, every scent has been making me sick. Even bubble gum has been making me. Um, the pure bubble gum from Sprouts that Joey uh, chews, Mr. Cheek. I don't like the smell of that either. It's like all the smells have been, I'm not pregnant. Okay. I know I'm not pregnant. That's not it. It's been, it's been an issue that's been happening for a while. So those are pretty hefty topics. I don't know what I was thinking. I only have like five minutes left. Let's talk about something kind of funny. Um, so when I was younger, I worked at Coloring Mine and I had a um, coworker that told me that I looked like Jennifer Lawrence. And I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I personally don't think that I look like Jennifer Lawrence, I don't see it, but I, I can see why some people see it. Like I have hooded eyes um, and I've got big cheeks, hence the knit cheek. <laughs> That's actually where it came from. Um, my original, so I have a couple Instagrams, book cheek, knit cheek, skate cheek. And I think I had home cheek. I had home cheek at one point too for like interior design stuff because I'm, I'm trying to make sure that if I ever come out with a man brand that all the, I'm joking. Oh, I also had cookie cheek because I used to make cookies. Um, anyway, so someone, someone told me I looked like Jennifer Lawrence in my early twenties and then I never got it again. And then I got bangs somewhat recently. Um, and at S Sprouts, my phone is dying. Um, so I was in Sprouts and some, some girl working there was like, oh my God, you must get so tired of hearing that you look like Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> I was like, so tired. <laughs> And it made my day and I was just like, dang, the bangs are working. And then it happened again. I was at floor and decor buying tile and we were renovating a bathroom. And the, a girl said, man, you look like Jennifer Lawrence. And I was like, okay, the bangs are staying. And it was huge. <laughs> um, I have to be careful because you know what? I have been watching or I watched a few episodes of Love is Blind, and I know what happens when you say that you look like a celebrity and you do not look like a celebrity. People will come after you. <laughs> and then my cousin was like, you look like Dakota Johnson, and I am obsessed with Dakota Johnson. I think Dakota Johnson is gorgeous, and I just love her. I think she's hilarious. I loved her in Persuasion. Um, so basically, bangs make me look like a celebrity is the conclusion. I'm joking. I don't, as I said, I'm actually really struggling with my hair. I don't, I don't know how to hair. I don't know how to hair. I try all the time. I'll like try to put half of it up and then I end up leaving the house like this. I'm like, I take all of it out and I just go. My neighbor is riding by. Please don't see me from the video in my house. And Joey is home. So the video is now over. Um, I got like a fourth of a row in, in 27 minutes as I've been recording. So I am definitely going to post one more video at least before I leave. So look, look for that. And I promise that this is going to be, this cardigan is going to be done. I actually finished the neckband once and then ripped it out because the cast off was too tight. So, um, yeah, like comment, subscribe, please. Mr. Cheek is home. Um, gotta go. So bye. Okay. She's up. She's all over my arm.